Now I recognize Rich McCormick from Georgia. Rich. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you to the witnesses for being here today. Uh, next, mar next month marks October 7th. Not only my birthday, but obviously an infamous day in history in which Israel was attacked, about 1,200 people slaughtered, uh, 250 people kidnapped, including many Americans. Uh, this attack, in my opinion, was made a reality by Iran in support of evil people. Uh, we've seen them support Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Russia, China, pretty much every enemy we have they've supported openly. They've created this unholy axis, which they, as a small country with a very small GDP, has become literally a purveyor of hate and death around the world now. Uh, Ms. Frontenrose, it doesn't make the front news anymore, but we continue to have attacks in the Persian Gulf, uh, mainly from the Houthis. Uh, we've seen ships attacked. We've seen a couple of them recently attacked in September, earlier this month. And then September 9th, we shot down another drone. Uh, we know that they have these capabilities only because of Iran. The question is, how do we cut off the flow of these weapons from Iran that are going to our enemies, especially the Houthis, particularly in this instance? Congressman, there is a lot of coordination to happen with some of our partners in the region. Iran uses both water means and land means to do these transfers. We have rat lines crossing some of the countries in the south of the peninsula, and about six months of the year when there are not monsoons, you have dows taking tiny pieces of weapons that are hidden in tiny places into Yemen to arm the Houthis. They also have 3D printers, so, and many of these parts are ordered on whole, on Would you know, it be Alibaba. safe to say that it's almost impossible to cut off their supply via routes that basically are endless? Cutting off the supply of much of this material would be very difficult. Yes, you would. I agree with you. you so would, it's better to aim for bigger targets. Well, there we go. We're setting up the, the, uh, the conversation here, aren't we? Uh, Mr. Abrams, since Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Iran provided Russia with scores of the uh, Shahid suicide drones. Secretary Blinken confirmed last week that Iran recently provided Russia with a large new shipment of ballistic missiles yeah. that will undoubtedly be used to kill Ukrainian civilians and ultimately to try to win the war for Russia, which basically is an invasion of Europe, which NATO was set out from the very outgo to, to resist. It's the most germane time of NATO's existence since its creation. So we're at essentially war with an invading, expansionist, tyrannical government into Europe that we formed an alliance to resist. Why has this administration basically stood idle while Iran continues to supply our enemies with something we really can't stop them from doing just by supply lines, as we, we already said with the Houthis. We're having the same problem with Russia, but on a much different scale and for much different reasons. But why haven't we done anything? I think that we should be doing much more enforcement of sanctions. Uh, the administration says we don't want confrontation and we don't want escalation. I would actually rather that Iran didn't want escalation or confrontation. Bingo. Out of fear of us. So, so you served in Reagan's administration, did you not? Yes. I'm jealous, by the way. <laughs> Reagan, I mean, come on. This guy's the guy for me. What do you think Reagan would have done, given his history, with nations who are probably troublesome, but not even as troublesome as Iran? What, what kind of response do you think he would have given? He would have tried to talk them into, negotiate them into stopping, and if it failed, he would have acted. And He would have acted. In 1988, he did. He certainly their did. Navy. And I remember people going, oh my gosh, it's the beginning of the end. These guys are going to come after us. They, they hate us. Yes, they do. And Muammar Gaddafi, after losing a son, rolled over on his back, showed his belly, and said, I want to be friends. Because we understand that region, and they understand strength. If you show weakness, you give them an inch, they take a mile. And thank you for servicing, being of service to such a great president, such a strong president. I saw it during Reagan's administration. I saw it during Trump's administration. When you break out the Moab, the mother of all bombs. When you hit somebody in the jaw that's a bad person, 
They roll over and they say, I don't want any more of this. And this is the time to act, in my opinion, before they become a nuclear power. Right. Are we waiting for Iran to become a nuclear power before we do something? And then, of course, we won't because we'll be scared to. This is the time to act. Weakness has created war. Weakness creates death. Weakness creates a propagation of this hatred and these propped up enemies that we have. And I think we should hit Iran hard. I, it really disappoints me. The Biden administration has been absolutely inept, weak, and ineffective. With that, I yield. Thank you.